Hi, welcome to a one minute plus summary for scope management. Scope management starts with plan scope management. Our main goal here is to plan how to manage scope, how to manage the requirements process. So our two major outputs are the scope management plan and the requirements management plan. Our next process is collect requirements. In collect requirements, we apply these plans, the scope management plan and the requirements management plan, and these are encapsulated in a more overarching project management plan. We also need to think about our stakeholders when it comes to this process. So we think about our stakeholder register and our stakeholder engagement plans. So our major output from collecting requirements from these stakeholders is the requirements documentation and requirements traceability matrix. Our next process is define scope. In defined scope, you need to think about inclusions, exclusions, constraints, assumptions. These are rather important as you're defining what needs to be done on the project as a whole. Based on one requirement, you could have a huge amount of scope added. So scope does not equate to requirements. They're two different things. Requirements could lead to more scope. So in defined scope, we create a project scope statement as our major output. And then we move on to create WBS. The work breakdown structure is a hierarchical description of the project that helps stakeholders better understand the project. But our major output from create WBS is called the scope baseline. Why? Because the scope baseline contains the WBS, the WBS dictionary, and the project scope statement. So these three documents make up your scope baseline. Our next process is validate scope. In validate scope, your customer is reviewing the deliverable that you submitted. The deliverable that you said was fit for use and will conform to their requirements will now be put under the proverbial microscope by the customer to make sure that that deliverable is indeed fit for use from their perspective and that it conforms to their requirements from their perspective. As a result of this, you can be sure that you're going to get either an accepted deliverable that signifies that that product service or result is good to go, or we're going to end up with a change request. Our last process in scope management is called control scope. And in control scope, we are ensuring that people are following the scope plans. They are not gold plating. They're following the scope baseline and everything that was promised was done. No more, no less. And that concludes our one minute plus summary for scope management.